ladies and gentlemen, Wendell Sixton Park is finally canceled. Jaden and Willow Smith are interviewed by the New York Times and have no childhood whatsoever. And the Aaliyah movie and the backlash that followed. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Cool Radio. Welcome to the Cool. It's your man, Chris Godrock. What's up, my family? It's Maliki and Sweet Senorita. It's your boy, Dirty Girl. This is All Mills from the Critics. I just finished my interview at Cool Radio. And I'm just letting you guys know that you guys need to tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. Because this place is wild. Of course! Don't touch that dial. You miss your disc. You understand? Ooh. You lot. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now tuned into CFRE 91.9 FM. It's your man, DM Cool. And you're now tuned into Cool Radio. Oh, you didn't know? Your ass better call somebody. That's right, that's right. Tell a friend to tell a friend because we are broadcasting from the airwaves of UTM, University of Toronto at Mississauga. And like you heard in the promo, the Sound Summit is going down tonight at 9 p.m. at UTM. Make sure y'all check that out. Four of UTM's livest bands in the building set to duel with one another. So you might want to keep in tune for that. But... Like I said, to open up the show, we have a lot to get to on tonight's show. We got 106 in Park finally getting canceled. We also have the Aaliyah movie and the backlash that ensued. And we also have a whole lot more in store, including the missing childhoods of Jaden and Willow Smith. I'll get into that later. But before we do that, I got a little something to get off my chest right now, man. I think it's important that all you guys hear this. I'm talking about the Let That Ish Breathe, man. Let's drop that real quick. Let this bitch breathe. That's right, that's right. I gotta let that ish breathe all over the place because I have some stuff to get off my chest. Um, Before I do that, right before I do that, though, around the 8.15 minute mark, we got independent artist in the building. He goes by the name of LC and the artist. He will be in the studio around 8.15-ish. But, like I said before, I have some stuff to get off my chest, man. The Toronto Raptors played against the Memphis Grizzlies last night. Very riveting game, if I may so so myself. Uh, Raptors got the W in convincing faction, 96-92. Uh, we're still first in the East. Let me just say that right there. We the North, we the East. You already know how that goes. But even more important than that, um, they did a special ceremony during the game to commemorate the legacy that is Vincent Lamar Carter, okay? Vince Sanity, half man, half amazing. Call him what you want to call him, but... I think it should be duly noted that this man put Toronto on the map. I don't want to hear anything about it. Yes, the way he left was ugly. Yes, sometimes he complained about his knees or about being injured in general. But you cannot deny the fact that this man put the city on the map. And the thing that I can't stand the most is when when I still hear people boo him. Why? It has been 10 years. This man got traded in December of 2004. It's been 10 years since that time. People need to let it go. When it first happened, I can admit, we're all all stunned. We're all outraged. Me, I was kind of in denial. I still had him in my NBA Live roster at the time. Still played in my franchise mode. Didn't want to, you know, update the roster because, you know, who am I going to use? Well, Chris Bosh. I'm not going to use Chris Bosh in NBA Live. But the point is, we all have to let it go. All right? You, you, we can't keep booing him every time this man touches the ball. This man has torched us so many times, whether it be in the regular season or the playoffs. It's time to let it go. I know it was ugly. It was kind of like that bad breakup that neither party wanted to go through. But you cannot deny the fact that we had some great times. If it weren't for him, we never would have made it to the playoffs. We never would have advanced in the playoffs. We never would have had any like major cable outlet like like TNT or NBC You know, come north of the border and broadcast our games from time to time. And there never would have been so much excitement in the city had it not been for Vince Carter. I think people just need to recognize that this man is at the tail end of his career. He's about 37 years old. He's played for like five different teams now, which to me boggles my mind because at most he should be playing for like maybe three teams with as much talent as he has. I think people just need to let it go. And not only just Vince, but any former Raptor who got traded or or decided to sign uh, to another team. Like, Jameis Sotomayor, let it go. Tracy McGrady, let it go. Bosh, I know it's still relatively fresh, but let it go. Oliver Miller, let it go. Just let it go. We have to let it go. I think it's important that everyone just needs to let go of their ill feelings towards players who chose to leave. I mean, Bargani... 
actually, no, no, keep booing him because I hate Bargnani. Uh, Hilo Turkle, no, Hilo Turkle, he's kind of bad. Just boo him as well. Point is, the point is, let it go. Let it go for all the guys who chose their destinies, who chose their paths, especially for Vince, because if it weren't for him, we the North, all that stuff would not be happening right now. And chances are, we would have pulled off a Grizzlies movement and just moved to some city in like Albuquerque or something like that. That's the whole, that's the bottom line that people need to understand. So I'm glad that they had that, that ceremony for Vince. I would have appreciated better if they actually broadcasted live on TV rather than during like a timeout or something like that. But that's just me being like the Uber fan. And I'll say this one day, I don't know when it's going to happen. Maybe the moment he decides to call it quits or 10 years from now, this man's jersey will be retired on the rafters at the Air Canada Center. Mark my words, it's happening. And on that note, we got to get to a commercial break. Uh, coming up at around the 8.15 minute mark, we got my man LC the, Art, LC, the artist in the building. He's going to talk about his music, his photography, his videography, all that good stuff in between. But before we get to that, we got to get to some good tunes. And you already know how I like to stay well connected, not just in the dot, not just in Canada, but all over. I, I like to call myself Mr. International sometimes. And with that being said, I got some music from my homies down south in North Kakalaki. AKA North Carolina. I'm talking about my people's TC3 and got a new single out called Choosing. So keep it locked. We'll be right back. This is Cool Radio. Yeah. Yes, yes, yo. Welcome back to the show. You're now tuned to CFRE 91.9 FM. It's your man DM. Cool. You're now tuned into Cool Radio. Welcome back to the show, people. Once again, that was the latest single from TC3, a group out of North Carolina, and they call that single Choosing. So make sure to keep on. Keep on the lookout for them. If they blow up, you know where you heard them first. You already know. Now, speaking of blowing up, my next guest is in the building. He is a musician, a videographer, a photographer, a jack of all trades. He's a milkman. He's, he's everything in between, man, basically. I'm talking about my man, LC, the artist. LC, welcome to the show, homie. Thank you, sir. How are you? I'm good. I'm doing good, man. Let's, let's get right into it, man. All right. So uh, how was LC, the artist, created? Um, do you know what? And uh, because you were talking about basketball earlier, this makes it even funnier. Uh-huh. Um, I used to do street ball, so it kind of came from that, and that's where LC kind of came from. We spelt out the initials LC, yeah, and those initials were for last chance, mm-hmm. and that just comes from a drunk night with my friend's dad. Okay, <laughs> okay. And he was trying to say Lashawn, and he said last chance. <laughs> that's how it worked. That's out. hilarious. I love it. Yeah, I love it. Origins are always the best, man. Yeah. So basically. <laughs> What sparked your love for multiple art forms? Um, to be real, it's just it's just being able to express myself in in the different means of media. Mm-hmm. Um, and I feel like having access to media, like the easy access to it, the do it yourself lifestyle, is huge in the world. Mm-hmm. Whether it's independent artists or whatever, so I feel like that's really what what strives me to continue to do this stuff. Because mm-hmm. like I'm not I'm not at the point where I'm like a millionaire earning revenue. Yeah, so yeah. it's like. I'm doing it based off of the fact that I enjoy it. Mm-hmm. So, and that's what's up, man. You got you got to do what you love at the end of the day, whether you're yeah. getting paid for it or not. Like you got to have a passion for it. It's something that w- that makes you wake up in the morning and say, "Hey, I'm going to do this today." You yeah, exactly. I mean? exactly, exactly. That's what it all comes down to. Uh, so you've gone from photography to videography to videography to music. So through all those ventures, were you trying to find your creative niche? Um, you know what? I got into videography because, uh, again, street ball. Mm. I was filming myself because I didn't have a videographer. Who's going to film a guy play basketball at a ball court that's mm-hmm. not on, like, a team? I'm just, like, playing ball doing tricks. Yeah. So it's weird to people. So I used to just put my camera on a bench, mm-hmm. film it, and then edit it at home on Windows Movie Maker. Yeah, yeah. Then I upgraded to Sony Vegas. So uh-huh. it's like, I started, I was like, okay, it's like, I can do so much more with this video production. Mm-hmm. And then I had friends that rap, so I would do videos for them. Mm-hmm. And then... The way I got into video first and then photography, yeah. Based on how how the ease of access again, like it went from using camcorders and, and those kind of things to DSLRs. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, why don't I just take photos? Mm-hmm. If I if I'm learning how to set up for a video shoot, it must be easier to just do a photo. Mm-hmm. So now I'm just kind of taking both of them, and merging them together, and utilizing them. Exactly. Yeah. Hey man, you gotta make the, you gotta make it work somehow, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly, man. So nowadays with social media, um, they say that anyone can be a photographer when you're using Instagram. Anyone can be a videographer of Vine, and yeah. anyone can be an artist with GarageBand. So, what, like, in your opinion, like, is it the person who kind of depreciates the art form, or is it those social media platforms that do it? Uh, that depreciate it? Yeah. 
Um, or is it a combination of both? Yeah, I don't even know if it's like depreciated, man. I feel like everybody's taking a risk. Mm-hmm. I feel like to me, like that's appreciative in itself, mm-hmm. and I can respect that. So the only thing that depreciates it, I guess it would be the person. I'll go with the person. Okay. Because people are doing it based on the fact that they think that they'll earn a living off of it mm-hmm. and like be rich and be famous. Like mm-hmm. there's so many like girls and guys on yeah. Instagram right now with like 30,000 followers mm-hmm. that just take pictures of themselves. Exactly. And they're not models. They're not even like modeling anybody's brand. Like even no. if they're like holding down their homies brand, mm-hmm. that'll be popping. But yeah. they're literally just like, I went to the store today. Here's yeah. what I got. 300,000. Like, it's just vanity on a whole other level. Yeah, yeah. And then so. someone had the audacity to put on their on their bio for booking info. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, but what am I booking? Like, <laughs> exactly. Like a grocery store event with you? Like, I'm confused. Right? That's, that's how – that's the only thing that social media has done is it's actually brought people too deep into people's lives. Yeah. It takes away the mystery. Exactly. Um, and it's hard to be mysterious if you want to be on a social network. Yeah. You almost have to act like you don't exist mm-hmm. and, and then just kind of lurk. And I feel like with social media, trust me, there's so there's so many positives of social media, but yeah. the negatives feel like they stand out more. It's like you can be yeah. you can be anybody you want on social media, yeah. and as long as they don't really know you, you can pretend to that person that you're that big shot, or whatever. But really, you use your radiator to heat up your Mac food for dinner. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, it's, and, and, and that's the reality of it. It's yeah, like the the image that's being perceived isn't reality for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. Um, and I don't, I don't know why somebody would be that comfortable to fake their lifestyle. Yeah. But that's my personal preference, right? Yeah. Like I, I, I haven't been in that position, so mm-hmm. I would have to actually get an understanding from it and have somebody explain that to me. Yeah. And maybe I'll be able to agree or disagree or whatever, but mm-hmm. it'll make more sense to me at that point. I think it's just a notion that media constructs reality at the end of the day. So yeah. what you see is what you get in a sense, right? Yeah, exactly. We only judge for what we see for face value. Yeah, and, like well, that, and we're going to perceive that as a reality. Human nature is based on judgment. Mm-hmm. And, and that's where it goes down to like all these stereotypes and all these different like isms. Yes. It's like it's all based on when you look at somebody, what do you see immediately? His mm-hmm. pants are saggy? Oh, he might, he might kind of be a thug. Mm-hmm. Like all these different things persuade your, your brain process. Mm-hmm. And you look at somebody and you're like, oh, I know this person. You have nothing of knowledge about that person mm-hmm. until you have a conversation with them. Exactly. And that's what um, comes to at the end of the day. Exactly. Now, let's get into the music, okay? okay. So with the Thank music, uh, you've been doing it for about the last three years or so. And also you put out a project recently called Leo Soul. Yes. So what was the concept behind that? Um, so I myself am a Leo, mm-hmm. uh, August 11th. And uh, I really like the idea of just empowering the characteristics of a lion. Mm-hmm. Um, watching movies like Lion King, watching movies mm-hmm. like The Wizard of Oz. Like, mm-hmm. They all mesh into my own lifestyle. There's relevancy into like how I live mm-hmm. that I could relate to how things have happened in those movies and transcended into real life. So I feel like the Leo soul concept is just kind of pouring out my soul as a Leo, mm-hmm. all my characteristics out on the on the forefront Mm -hmm. absolutely and what and like how can you describe the sound of that project for people who haven't heard yet uh it's i guess okay so i'll say um it's uh let's go with modern modern like like rap Mm -hmm. but like more hip-hop i wouldn't say rap okay that do a lot of singing as well okay so you'll find like like some r&b snippets uh some some hip-hop pushed in mm-hmm. and then you'll find some like like trancey like trippy type of music as yeah well. yeah like psychedelic almost yeah yeah mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm i really like that uh like the acid jazz type of feel yeah of yeah everything, and mixing that with normal mainstream music okay and trying to find like a, a threshold or in between yeah, yeah. kind of like what drake does like with this like own sound and kind of exactly. takes like little little drums from like the age and kind of like yeah integrates it in his own sound okay yeah. okay that's what's up man so you know making that transition from photography to videography to music did you feel like you have to prove yourself that much more because you're entering in from a different field um no nah, man i mean i initially was doing music like behind the scenes anyways with mm-hmm. my friends with my peers like in high school i performed at like a christmas assembly mm-hmm. so i was always like since like grade nine i was already doing music mm-hmm. um but i wasn't like actually promoting it mm-hmm. i think the pressure came into play when uh I first introduced like my music to some of my friends and they're like, Oh, you should post this stuff. You should share it. Mm-hmm. And I shared it and I didn't necessarily get a feedback. I was kind of waiting. I was like, like, 
Like I was, I was hype. I was like, these guys said this is that, this is that good, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm like, oh, I'm about to post this. Yeah. And it's like three people liked it. I was like, okay, uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, like, it's like crickets. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I thought because I'm like, I'm gonna just have a fan base immediately because all my friends. Yeah. But that's not the reality. Like mm-hmm. everybody has different tastes, different interests, and on top of that, you're new to it. Yeah. Like in the sense of whether I'm new to sharing it or whatever, it's like they're just getting introduced to LaShawn or LC. Yeah. So they're like. Who is this guy? Why should I take him seriously? Yeah. So I guess it was more so just taking myself serious whenever I did a song mm-hmm. and and remembering that. I think the, the more challenging part was remembering that when I'm doing a song, um, and this is where I'm still learning, is like I'm not doing it for myself specifically. Mm-hmm. It's it's a emotion that I have that I want to share with people. Yeah. So that's what I'm really learning how to grasp and, and open wide to like share my message and not just say like I, me, like. Mm-hmm. Lil Wayne did a lot of that and he's learned to like kind of transition, but he still does it sometimes. Yeah. But it's like that whole like I me, like it's not only about me. Mm-hmm. It's us, we, mm-hmm. our, like as as human. Mm-hmm. So that's what I'm really like trying to captivate right now. All right. So pretty much, you know, you are media savvy. You've mastered videography, photography, and the art of musicianry. So what would you say is next on your plate? Um I'm thinking about beat making and stuff. Okay. Maybe. Uh, I, I mean, I like, I looked at a lot of people that have made it in the industry, mm-hmm. and it's like, what's their niche that makes them different from everybody else? Mm-hmm. Like, Odd Future, they were just unique. They were a group of young kids that acted like... A, hooligans. 13, yeah. They're, <laughs> they're like, they're not goons. They're hipster yeah. hooligans yeah. living a life, enjoying life, mm-hmm. having fun, making jokes. Um, and then you have ASAP Rocky or ASAP Mob, and, and like their whole clique is like a very demonic type of feel. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, like, I'm trying to just em- empower, like, success or, or positivity mm-hmm. and mesh all of them together. Like, I want to be able to, like, drop a project with music videos, mm-hmm. with a photo shoot, everything done by me. Mm-hmm. And, like, I slowly, like, on the low, I do some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I want to be able to do that. And then, like, it be recognized as, like, oh, he shot his own video. Mm-hmm. He put his camera on a tripod and took photos of himself and they came out pretty good. Mm-hmm. He's doing mixing and mastering by himself and he's making beats. Mm-hmm. Like why does he need anybody else? Yeah. Cause at the end of the day, we're here for ourselves, mm-hmm. and we can only rely on people with good faith. Yes. It's not guaranteed. So while I'm waiting and having that, that hope and ambition that people are going to come around and like really help me cluster up and, and move forward. I have to do it on my own. Absolutely. So I think that's like my main thing, right? Gotcha. I definitely feel you on that most definitely. <laughs> so we're going to get into all that later on in the show. But before we do that, we got some games that we like to play with the guests, all right? Because <laughs> we like to entertain the guests. We like to entertain the millions and millions of listeners at home because, you know, they want to get a sense of your personality and all okay. that, right? So I got two games. One of them especially designed for you. So the first game we got, you know, you did mention that you're an NBA head. You did play street ball back in the day. So this one... I call triple threats. All right. Okay. So you know, I'm nervous. Yeah. Nah. Don't be nervous. Don't be nervous, son. Don't be nervous. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah, like I'm rusty on the NBA. I want to take a ten minute break and just yeah. cap the whole league right now. <laughs> nah. Nah. You're good. You'll be good. So we've already we've been mentioning throughout the entire interview that you you mastered this that and a third in in the art of media basically. So we're gonna take it to the court this time around. All right. Okay. Got three scenarios that I want your take on. All right. <laughs> so. The Raptors are currently first in the Eastern Conference right now. Mm-hmm. Can they win their division, maintain the best record in the East, and ultimately win the East? Your take. Um. Yeah, I think I think that they can hold it down. Uh-huh. Uh huh. They're showing their growth. Like, just I haven't even been watching like full games. I just watch highlights right now. Cause yeah. I won't lie. Right now, I'm at a point where it's kind of boring to watch a full game for me. Yeah. So I just like to catch the highlights or like I'll watch part of a game and then I'll kind of go back to it later. Yeah, yeah. Um, but just seeing them, they're coming together as a collective. Mm-hmm. They need a big man. True. <laughs> they need somebody that can muscle somebody on the ball court. Mm-hmm. But I think they're skilled enough where they're going to be able to at least hold down the Eastern Conference. I believe that. I believe, yeah. me, me as a fan, I believe that. Yeah. Uh, as, as, you know... <laughs> An objective, you know, I think they can get, like, top three for sure. They can get, like, a third seed. Yeah. If they can top the East, even better. But I think a third seed is, yeah. like, 
for me, like uh, as an objective, of course, like a more realistic, more realistic goal they can achieve. Maybe even second. It all depends yeah. on how everything unfolds in the East yeah. at, when it's all said and done in April. Um, next question now, yeah. um, and we're taking it back this time with this question actually. Uh, which team had a more historical three P? The Celtics in the sixties, the Bulls in the nineties, or the Lakers in the early two thousands? Uh, I'm a Kobe fan, so I'm going to go with the Lakers. <laughs> <laughs> I, have to, I had to do it, bro. <laughs> Damn it! I, I, was like, I was like, Jordan, Jordan. Kobe. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Kobe, I got so Kobe. much to say about Kobe. Go ahead, go ahead. Kobe, I, I, I look at him as like, yeah, people call him a ball hog. He's a ball hog. He has to be a ball hog. He proved a point in one of the years where he did not hog the ball, and they lost. He started sharing the ball. He didn't shoot. Now, why isn't he shooting? Now, though, like Kobe's like done. I love the man, but he's done, bro. He he he's 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 been done. Man. I'm sorry, but like <laughs> this guy, he's a plague to like whatever roster he has, man. Like yeah. he he just hogs the ball. Like t- I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this one time, and we're gonna move on with the questions because I could go for days on this. Kobe is obsessed with wanting to be the next Jordan. He is obsessed with that. It's yeah. to the point where I, he has no identity. Name me <laughs> any player, any pundit, or any fan who has ever said that so and so plays like Kobe. You can't even tell me one. It's because this game is too much like Jordan. The way he shoots, his fadeaways. Hell, no, I think, the, I think the way he tucks in his warm ups is like Jordan too. I think he's just he's he's in his own like lane, like. I do agree that he's he's trying to follow that Jordan. You yeah. know, I think his thought process is like I need those rings. I need to catch up. Like I yeah. need, like I'm not where I should be. But like I feel like he it's weird. I can't even compare generations. That's the thing that bothers me the most when mm-hmm. people do like I I always hear like LeBron or or, uh, or Jordan. It's like, "What?" Yeah. It's like it's a different era. Yeah. Like, and, and it's inevitable. It's going to happen yeah, regardless. Like, Cuz like Jordan got crossed by Allen Iverson. Yeah. But that was when he was like he should have retired like even then, he was still putting up numbers, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but his body was withering, mm-hmm. like, for that NBA speed. Yeah. So, I mean, like, it's, it's funny to just watch. It's funny having those discussions with people. It's like era versus era. It's like mm-hmm. you can't really compare them. Like, the competition is so different now because the game has changed. Exactly. Look at the way point guards are built. Yeah, like, yeah. They're yeah. disgustingly, like, <laughs> it's steroided, man. Like, look yeah. at Russell Westbrook. He's built like a, like a small forward, if yeah. anything. He's he's practicing with a broken hand right now or something. Yeah, yeah, that's scary. He's a yeah, he's he's a different kind of monster, man. Like yeah. whenever he drives the lane and dunks, I get scared. I'm like, yo, don't yeah. don't hurt yourself, yeah. you know. D Rose, right? Hey, oh, that's oh man, that's my boy. I'm sorry. Let, let, final question. Final question. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the most versatile player of all time? Oscar Robertson, Magic Johnson, or LeBron James? And we're talking just like on a, like on like pure talent and just I'll go stats. With Magic Johnson. Go on Magic. Yeah, I, LeBron James. I don't even know why he's he he's I he can't shoot and he gets locked down. But you know what? Like he has a type of body where like he can muscle through any type of opposition and he's going to get his points regardless. Yeah, but that's the only way he's going to be able to do it. He doesn't have the skill. I don't feel like in that sense of like ball handling mm-hmm. or he doesn't like his range. I feel is so like sporadic. It is sporadic. I mean, yeah. he's a good mid range shooter. Yeah, long range, maybe once in once every quarter, I'll I'll, I'll trust him to do it. Yeah. Um, I would say as far as ball handling, he's played point so many times. So his ball handling, he forced himself to play point. He's like, did he force himself hockey. or did a coach force himself? Uh, force he he stays asking for that ball though. Even on the court, I feel like I see him like he's like, no, mm-hmm. no, 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 you're not shooting here. But he then, but moments. but I'll challenge you on that for a second. How come he's not doing that right now in Cleveland? I find that he's re- I find that he's very passive right now. He's trying to learn. Well, he came back to his town where he wrecked, so <laughs> he has to come back and be humble. <laughs> where he wrecked, <laughs> he, he has to come back and try to be humble, be graceful. Like I'm, I'm the guy that I was supposed to be. I'm back. I'm sorry. I feel like that's what he's doing right now, and he has a, like a great supporting cast too. Yeah. Like aside from like Sean Marion, because he needs to stop too. Like I like him, but yeah. Not now. Not now, yeah. No, it's been a long time since the Matrix, man. Yeah. We, <laughs> we, we've, we've eaten the blue pill by now. <laughs> All right, man. We're going to move on to the next game. Now, this game right here, mainstay for everyone who comes through Hallowed Halls of Cool Radio. 
I call this one, I'd quit the game. Every second, every minute, man, I swear that she can get it. All right, so in this game, you know, you are the uh, eligible bachelor. You know, you're, you're, living oh your, you're living your life, you're doing your thing, you're cruising, you're wheeling and dealing, kiss stealing, all that stuff, right? <laughs> but there comes a point in time in everyone's life where they got to settle down, they got to hang up the jersey on the rafters, they got to turn in their black book, they got to do all that, you know, the, the white house, the white picket fence, tire swing. I said the black book. You, trust <laughs> me, man. The, the, the apple pie cooling on the windowsill, the golden retriever, all of that. If you are to quit the game for one of these two women, which I have handpicked, who would you quit the game for? You know, since you're going on the whole Leo soul vibe, I, I figured we may as well go on the Neo soul vibe with this okay. one. Okay. Would you quit the game? <laughs> Would you quit the game for Erica Badu or Sade? Oh, Sade. Sade! Come on, son. <laughs> Come on, son. <laughs> Erica Badu is cool, though. Yeah. But she scares me. She does. She really does. But that she video scares where me. she's walking around naked, I messed with it. I watched it like several times. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Her bone's fat. But I wasn't expecting that, actually. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was not expecting that. Yeah. But uh, Sade. Smooth up, mm. right? Besides, I think everyone She's needs to know. She's still looking good. She is, yes. Mm. Yo, black don't crack, eh? Black does not crack. It does not, and neither does Sade. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we still got LC in the building. And before we go to commercial break, we're about to play one of his tunes right now. It's a new tune that he has out right now that I have the exclusive to because, you know, I'm just that dude who got all the exclusive stuff. Yeah. And this tune right here is called No Feature Martel. Before we play it, what can we? What can you say about this track? Uh, Martel is a... Uh... Is an up and coming artist as well, you know, and he, um, it was dope working on a song with him, mm-hmm. and I don't have the rights to the beat. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> it's for a mixtape. Jack so. for beats, ladies and gentlemen, just <laughs> like Ice Cube for that But the producer, his name is uh, I don't even know how to say it, Jengi Beats or Genji Beats. Okay, and he's like, he's dope. He's like an indie, like electronic type of producer. Okay, uh, yeah, this is my attempt at mainstream music. And that's what's up. And we're about to hear your attempts. So with that being said, keep it locked, ladies and gentlemen. When we come back from the break, it's time for Trip Talk. Keep it locked. This is Cool Radio. Yeah. Yes, yes, yo. Welcome back to the show. You're now tuned into CFRE 91.9 FM. It's your man, DM Cool. And you're now tuned into Cool Radio. Welcome back to the show, people. We still got my man, LC, the artist in the building. Yeah. You already know, son. Now. It's time to get into the weekly news, man. It's time for Trip (laughs) Talk. Three topics, three minutes each. With that being said, let's get to it right now, man. First and foremost, I want to give a eulogy to uh, a program that we all grew up with in the 2000s that I like to call 106 in Park. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. um, 106 in Park has announced that they are going off the air as of December of this year. However, they will remain as an online broadcast if you go to BET.com and such like that. But for me personally, I'm surprised that they actually lasted this long, especially when you notice a trend of countdown shows dying off. LC, what's your take on that? Um, Between, like, the the shows dying off and the the hosts, like, changing simultaneously. Yes. But um, now my my guess is like, where's Bow Wow getting his check now? Right, he was he was feeding his family or whatever. He was doing doing something recently. So, um, you know, I hopefully they take it down like off the show or Mm -hmm. off uh, the network and add something new. Yeah, Uh, they don't just kind of get rid of that idea. Yeah, I feel like a countdown show can still work. They need to tap into the like underground market. Mm -hmm. They need to like really connect with the artists that are out there that mm-hmm. are just buzzing on their own. Like, yeah. And I, I use this as an example, even though I'm not like a huge fan of him, Bobby Schmurter. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but he Dude. blew up. <sighs> About a week ago. <laughs> Can I, I don't even have a hat. Can you throw it? <laughs> <laughs> I'll throw my headphones. About a week ago. <laughs> he, uh, you know what? It, it bothers me that he's like, like up there right now. Cause both songs that he released, I'm pretty sure that they're both about killing. They are. And like exactly every other is. line is about a different way to shoot somebody with a different type of gun. And you know why? But I blew they're catchy. Up? You know why I blew up? Because it came with a dance. Yeah, that dance is on point. You can make a song about <laughs> serial killing. And as long as you have a dance that anybody can do, you're blowing up. I mean, 
it's not even a real dance. It's just like a drunk two step that your yeah. uncle does at a fam jam. It's all it is. I was Toronto like, dude's been doing that dance. I was literally looking all over YouTube just to find out this dance. Yeah. And I kept on seeing the same thing. I'm like, wait a minute, is this the dance? This is bullshit. <laughs> like, even Soldier Boy, when he did his little crank that way, I'm like, yeah. okay, that took like a couple step moves here. It was and there. kind of a routine, like, yeah. for a hip hop artist. Yeah. With, with Bobby Schmurter, it's funny because, well, that dance is hilarious. And there's like a, a minute video of like, this dance could go with anything. And they play like old yeah, school music and everything. I remember that. I was like, he just played like the greatest hits and he danced to all of them. Really? <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. See, but he. He's entertaining to watch. That's yeah. the weirdest thing. Like, if he can learn how to, like, adapt his subject matter or, like, his content. Because right now, he's a blackface. Yeah. And Clearly. that's the saddest part is, like, yeah, he's getting money. He might not care because he's, like, I'm eating. Mm -hmm. But it's, like, you're diminishing everything that, that black people try to fight for. Yeah. Um, Him and Young Thug are the worst, man. Young Thug... Can, 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 I say something, can I say something real quick, man? The BET Awards this year, or the BET Hip Hop Awards this uh, year, was a showcase of people you're never going to hear about within the next five years. Easily. That's all it was. All they did was pick artists who are popping on the internet yeah. and then put them on stage for two hours. Yeah. I watched it. I'm like, this is the worst shit I've seen from BET <laughs> since Keisha Cole's reality show. This is insanely <laughs> garbage. I was like, what am I watching? Yeah. So yeah, if BT it. elects to do that, you know, to replace one season park, then they're doomed forever. Now, as far as a countdown show goes, um, TRL had it right when they decided to go off the air mm -hmm. back in like 07. Yeah. Because social media, like YouTube and all, the, all, all those platforms were just about to spark. Yeah. Especially when you take it to the cow of MySpace and all that was about yeah. to get popping as well. So they saw that from, from a mile away like, and they're like, you know what? Let's fold in our chips while we still have them. And they still could have gone on because they were probably one of the top countdown yeah. shows. Yeah. BT was just the only one that dragged it out for whatever it was worth. Yeah, they're like, oh, we still have it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like the Freestyle Friday got worse and worse. It's yeah, like, that's why they did like Ultimate Freestyle Friday with yeah. Smack and them. Well, and really it's like Smack's like, okay, I get a paycheck from like a, a corporation. Now. Yeah. This is good. Exactly. But I don't, yeah, I don't know, man. I think – um. I think BT isn't even an interesting channel, to be honest. It's not. <laughs> the only way they keep me interested is Real, Real Husbands of Hollywood. That's, yeah, that's yeah, about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's about it. And even yeah. then, I'll catch it on the internet. Because yeah. at the time, I'll forget that it's on. Yeah. And you know what? I won't even lie. The first season, I was like, I'm not really feeling this. Like, a fake reality show? Yeah. And I was like, you know what? I like Kevin Hart a lot. Like, he's, he's hilarious. Yeah. There's no way he cannot be funny. So I was like, let me just give it a chance. Mm-hmm. I would just kind of like force myself to watch some of the episodes. I'm like, there are funny parts. Yeah. But the second season's on point. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely is. Definitely. I've been watching like. Oh, wait, hold on. Is it the third season they're on right now? I think it's the third, actually. The third? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm catching up. I'm on the second. Okay, cool. <laughs> True that. <laughs> that. There you go. Netflix, Netflix. lifestyle. I'm, Bob. I'm out here streaming. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. We're going to keep it moving. We're going to keep it moving. So, next on the docket, um, the children of Will. And Jada Pika Smith, Jada Smith and Will Smith were recently interviewed by uh, the New York Times. And basically, they had a mouthful of, quote unquote, enlightening things to say. Um, so I'm only going to say just a couple snippets of the of the interview here and there. And I'll let you guys get your take on it. LC, you're going to get your take on it as well, too. So the interviewer asked, what have you been reading? Willow says the following. Quantum physics. Oh, show. Jaden responds. The ancient secret of the flower of life and ancient texts, things that can't be predated. Ladies and gentlemen, I am not making this up. So what? anyways. <laughs> Isn't he 17? What is he talking? I'm confused. <laughs> Trust me. It gets worse. It definitely gets worse. They also went into the process of breathing. Take this in. <clears throat> and I quote, Willow says following, breathing is meditation. Life is meditation. You have to breathe in order to live. So breathing is how you get in touch with the sacred space of your heart. Jaden says the following. Wait, hold on. I'm trying to compose myself right now. She's 14. <laughs> Child. When babies are born, and this is Jaden, when babies are born, their soft spots bump. It has like a heartbeat in it. <laughs> That's because energy is coming through their body up and down. Willow, Willow interjects prana energy. Jaina interjects. It's prana energy because they still breathe through their stomach. They remember. Babies remember. And then later on, one of them asks, oh, what books are you reading? 
And then, mind you, I'm paraphrasing when I say this because I don't have the quote on my computer. But uh, Willow says, oh, I'm not reading anyone, anyone's book right now. I'm reading my own books. I enjoy my own books better. She writes her own books and she just reads them. <laughs> <laughs> Like a recap of what I've done? I <laughs> guess so. So, yeah. on that note, Elsie, what is your take on this? Somebody needs to just bring them to the hood. And, <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, just make them chill on the block like with like other youth. Like, oh, you guys like play basketball without a basketball net? Right. <laughs> like, because like, like, even like when I seen the ice bucket challenge, yes. I looked at that field. I was like... I can't be their land. I yeah, like, I know, right? I like they went somewhere to do this for real, like, like, a horse or something, <laughs> like, like like the the Himalayas or something yeah. like that. They're missing. I'm missing out on what they've got. <laughs> but they're missing out on what I got. I'll, I'll say so, this. I'll say this. They're young. They're malleable. They're discovering things about the world, which is cool. But at the end of the day, the the way they're describing the things that they're talking about, yeah. they sound overly pretentious. Yeah, and it, I feel as if. Their parents, Will and Jada, don't do enough constructive criticism on them. It's a whole lot of positive reinforcement, yeah. and they don't tell them that they're wrong about something. What they're saying right now, I'm not mad about what they're saying, but how they're saying it. Yeah. They almost want to sound as if they're light years ahead of everyone yeah. else, and that their mode of thinking is light years beyond yeah. the average human being, as if they're, they're immortals sitting on top of Mount Olympus or something like yeah. that. They are so out of touch with reality, it's crazy. And by the time they're like... 25 and they're like uh, they're, they're done feeding off of their parents and, and life hits them yeah. it's gonna hit them hard yeah especially well it's weird because they're getting cosigns from like like people that i could say i admire like like Jaden's hanging out with childish game you know first yes, off i thank you I was, gonna, I was about to say that i was about to say that i was listening to their i was listening to the quiet ep and he and have you heard it about yeah, yeah okay yeah. okay so he's doing his little spoken word interludes and i'm like i'm not mad at what you're saying but because it's coming from you, I don't believe it. Yeah, you're 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 16. Why are you talking about love and like yeah. being inside a girl's mind? And no, no, it's just it's all like it's ass backwards, right? Yeah. Now, right? And what scares me is like because Charles Gambino is a grown ass man. Yeah. <laughs> and like I really like him. Yeah. But this is very Michael Jackson s, and I'm really hoping it doesn't turn out to be what I. <laughs> <laughs> I had, to. I had to. I'm sorry. I was just thinking of Michael Jackson and, and Corey Feldman. Like, yeah. Because you know I mean? <laughs> that, that's the thing that scares me. Like, I don't want Childish Gambino to tarnish his image yeah, yeah, yeah. over something so, like, like this is, like, it can get weird. It can. Like, like he said in interviews, like, you know, like, I hang out with Jaden. He says some very deep stuff. I'm yeah. like, like, bro, you're what? Like, <laughs> like, like, you lost me. Like, yeah. Jaden's a child. Like, Chance the Rapper is young enough. Like, he's 19. Yeah. Like, yeah. there should be a cutoff limit. Yeah. You know like, I mean? And, yeah. And Chance the Rapper, he was doing drugs, whatever. He yeah. made himself fit into the adult public. Yeah. Jaden is, like, he's privileged. Like, Very. He has opportunities. Very. It's, like, it's just weird to see, like, th- that kind of relationship be built. Yeah. Which... It's kind of good if there's a mentorship. Yeah. But it seems like Childish Gambino's learning from Jaden, which is scary. It's very scary. Because the way he, he's answering stuff, and I'm like, and he's like, you know, like Jaden says, like, very deep things. I'm like, what? I feel like Jaden treats Gambino like a child. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Hence. Childish Gambino. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, that was coming up. That and on that note, we're going to the final topic. This one, whoo, this one's gonna cause some controversy. The Aaliyah movie aired this past weekend, and <laughs> <sighs> this this hurts my heart. Many people, many people, like everyone's minds on social media just exploded in yeah. outrage. Timbaland was was hurling out the most disrespectful memes I've seen in the longest time. It was a roast fest. It right? really was, and. Wendy Williams had a lot to explain come Monday, and she did. And I have a quote that I'm going to read to you all <laughs> right about now as soon as I open because my uh, Firefox is being very slow. But you know what? This is what she said right here. And I quote the following. I see my Leah movie broke the internet this weekend. Everybody got an opinion. Well, I must tell you whether you loved it or hated it, you watched it. It was the second highest rated movie on all of cable this year so far. Not just Lifetime, but all of cable, so thank you. We all have opinions, but I must say, if you still want to see the Aaliyah movie, it comes on tonight at 8 p.m. 
on Lifetime. And by the way, Alexandra Ship did a terrific job as Leah. Now, she didn't apologize. She didn't. She didn't. <laughs> I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And I'm going to try to be as very diplomatic as possible. I watched the movie. It wasn't the greatest thing in the world. It wasn't the worst thing I saw in the world. I'm just like, okay, whatever. Like, an adaptation. I think people's main grievance with the movie was the casting and how a lot of people didn't look like their counterparts and stuff like that. Yeah. I even had um, one of the cast members on my show a couple months ago, Shatrice, the, the, the lady who played uh, Miss Elliot. Miss Elliot, right? Yeah. And um, what she said, you know, as far as the casting director goes, was he or she wanted to cast whoever thought fit that role in terms of how they portrayed it during the the screen test and everything. Yeah. And And she was saying how if they wanted to choose someone who looked like them, they would have done that. So that's what she told me on the show, rather. Um, my main issue with this with this article right now is just the way Wendy went about describing what happened and why things were the way they were. Yeah. And all she said was, oh, we did number two. So basically, you didn't really answer anyone's grievances. You just said, hey, we got that money. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that, I feel like that's like the most disrespectful part is like you, didn't, you don't have to kiss ass. You don't have to like, like beg for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. But if there's like a like a cult of people that do not agree with what you did, mm-hmm. including like her main producer. Mm. So in that sense, the you have to just too. at least take the feedback. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like take it and actually let it digest. Mm-hmm. I feel like she's just like, I don't really care what you say. Yeah. I did a good movie. Yeah. Whatever. Biopic, whatever she wants to call that. Yeah. I didn't even watch it. Cause as I seen all the memes, I was like, there's no way I'm going to hurt myself. No, oh, I was man. like, I love Aaliyah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it. So mm-hmm. I'm looking at all the memes and I'm just watching like people are doing like their own memes. Like, yeah, um, this dude, I think he's from Toronto, Beat Buster. Uh-huh. He uh, he made a meme because he's like a chubby Hispanic guy. Yeah. He's like, uh, what do you say? Biopic chooses me for big pun. It's like, that's what people are doing. Like, that's how it's like. And he doesn't look like big pun. Yeah. So yeah. Like, that's that's <laughs> it, a that's joke a that's joke, going right? around. Yeah. Right. So it's like, obviously, you did something. Mm hmm. Again, like I understand there's industry standards that people don't always want to follow. Yeah. That's not really industry standard. That's just like you're trying to mimic somebody's life. Yeah. You should try to mimic somebody's life to yeah. complete potential. I'll say this. The worst like the worst what I saw and no disrespect to anyone in the film, by the way, no disrespect at all, but just for, for humor's sake. <laughs> the worst one I saw was from my man Trix. Oh. This man is an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> This man said, shout out to Tricks, by the way, you know, repping for Team Africa at the Juice Cup. Um, This man said, he posted a meme, and he said the following. Lifetime presents uh, the Lisa Left Eye Lopez story. It was a picture of Forrest Whitaker. I'm so done. (laughs) I'm so done. He has no heart. He has no heart. Oh, man. (laughs) And on that note... (laughs) On that note, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the Throwback Thursday track of the day. So with that being said, I think it's time that we uh, drop that beat real quick on him. That's right, people. As you know, it is November, and it is R&B month for Throwback Thursday. I saw that. Don't worry. It's all good. No one saw that at home. Um, Yep, it's R&B month, ladies and gentlemen, and... I figure, you know, let's take it back to the early 2000s with this joint right here. This is the, uh, I, I feel like this is the, the men's anthem for like, we're stepping out, you know, we're single, ready to mingle, it's dude's night out. This, this is the theme right here. And I'm about to play that right now. Ladies and gentlemen, coming from his 2001 album and his second best album, in my opinion, I'm talking about 8701. This is my man Usher, produced by Pharrell. With You Don't Have to Call, only on Cool Radio. And when we come back, and by the way, this is the extended overtime version of Cool Radio. But when we come back, we have the Wankster of the Week. So keep it up. This is Cool Radio after these messages. It's your man, Chris Godrock. What's up, my family? It's Maliki and Sweet Senorita. It's your boy, Dirty Germa. This is All Mills from the Critics. I just finished my interview at Cool Radio. And I'm just letting you guys know. That you guys need to tune in every Thursday at 8 p.m. Because this place is wild. Of course! Don't touch that down. You miss your diss. You understand? <laughs> yes, yes, y'all. You're now tuned into CFRE 91.9 FM. It's your man, DM. Cool! And you're now tuned into Cool Radio. We still got my man, Elsie, the artist in the building. Yeah! 
Ah. You already know. And before we end the show off, and we are in the overtime edition, but before we end it off, you already know it's that moment that y'all been waiting for. Y'all been waiting for about 10 minutes or so, so I apologize for the lateness. Blame my Africanness on that. Um, <laughs> it's time to get into Wankster of the Week. So with that being said, let's drop it on him like... So this week's Wankster of the Week. Oh, man, this is a good one right here. This week goes to none other than CNN correspondent Don Lemon, all right? <laughs> now, Don Lemon is getting the Wankster of the Week for the first time in Cool Radio history, uh, mainly because of a report that he did uh, earlier this week. So basically, I'll paint the picture for you guys. He was on CNN doing his show, of course, and he had on a guest by the name of, and I'm just getting it for you guys right now, the name of Joan Tarshish. I think that's how you say her name, Tarshish, I guess. Uh, basically, she is one of the alleged victims of uh, Bill Cosby's rape scandal. Okay, So she was on the show describing what had happened to her uh, when she went to Cosby's hotel room back in 1969 or something like that, describing all the events that took place. And one of the events that took place uh, was her saying how, you know, I have an infection. And if you try to have sex with me, then you're going to pass it on to your wife. That was her way of trying to avoid the rape. Um, so with that being said, Cosby allegedly told her to, you know, uh, perform oral sex. So this is where the interview took a turn for the worst, you know, for Lemon. So Lemon stated the following when she said that she was forced to give oral sex to him. And I quote, there are ways not to perform oral sex if you elect not to do it. So in other words, you're basically saying to a rape victim, an alleged one at the very least, that, hey, you could have prevented it. It's kind of your fault that you didn't do anything about it. You put it in your mouth. Exactly. And so basically... I'm surprised she didn't snap at him for saying that because she then she then fought to say that she was stoned and that she was kind of under the influence. And then had she not been there, she probably would have thought to have done it. And then Lemon said, yeah, you could have bit it or something like that. Yeah, like really. You're, you're really going to tell her that you could have bitten it. Thus escalating the situation <laughs> in which she probably would have been punched or assaulted in some way and then been raped after. So Don Lemon, this is what I got to say. You are in no position to be pointing fingers or to be making judgment calls of any kind, especially when you of all people have stated in your own memoirs that you as a child were molested by one of your mom's friends, okay? When you're molested, not only are you raped, but you're a child. So you would think that you or someone in your position would look at another person who is similar into your position and would not only sympathize, but would empathize because you've gone through the same thing and then he later went and did some phony ass apology basically saying if i offended anyone who who took light of my my comments towards my guests at the time i sincerely apologize no you don't we know that yeah. you did that just because one of your superiors said hey you got to say something to the people or else we're going to suspend you yeah so yeah. you were trying to be that that hard-hitting uh, journalist or question asking journalist like oh I don't know let's say uh, Nathan Downer and basically <laughs> if it were me if I had it my way I wish it was you interviewing Mike Tyson instead oh. of Downer because what questions would you ask would you ask about his rape charges were you would you ask if what if you're in that position would you ask hey you know there are ways to avoid assaulting a female do you know that yeah. Lemon, you're getting that way, so I have nothing further to say. You are the biggest hypocrite of any kind because at the end of the day, I could have just said to you, there are ways that you could have avoided being molested. You could have ran away. You could have ch called child services. You could have called the local authorities. How would you like if someone asked you that kind of question? So that being said, you're getting that wankster. Do you deserve that wankster? Of course. Let's drop that. Idiots. LC, <laughs> what's your take on this, man? Yeah, that's pretty disgusting. Um, the, it's sickening to watch like people try to tell somebody how they should have reacted when they weren't there. Exactly, that stuff is always like annoying. Yes, it's it very happens, subjective, like, and like, and it happens in like normal scenarios, but like that's an intense scenario. So, if you yeah. tell somebody they did it wrong, like you should have handled it differently yeah. instead of getting raped, like yeah, you need to work on like your approach to humans. Exactly, and. Yeah, if he would have interviewed Mike Tyson, he would have got the work. Because I feel like Nathan Downer, like, I feel bad for him because he was a mule. He he was given those questions. Yes. I feel like that. But 
he's supposed to be smart enough to, exactly. to reword them at least. Like, you've been doing this a long time yeah. now. Like, come on. Yeah. You're no rookie. You're not he an intern. You're punched by Mike Tyson. Like, right? You're supposed to think about that before you say anything. Like, will this, like, get me knocked he's out? He's the ex-heavyweight champion yeah. of the world. He bit off a man's ear. <laughs> Maybe I should take this smoothly. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. That guy on CNN, he... He messed up. Like it's yeah. just ironic that you would go that route, especially when you admitting that you've been through yeah. like, like a very similar like incident. That I don't know, man. Like my respect for him, like as the weeks go on, are just slowly waning down, man. Like <laughs> I, I have no love for this dude. Like yeah. like yes, you're a minority as, holding a big position. Kudos to you on that, but you're fucking up, yeah. <laughs> to put it lightly. I'm I'm wondering, like, was he trying to defend Bill? Like Oh, uh, you could have backed out of it, Bill. I think he tried. It, it like, kind of seems you know, like that's not it how was. You stick together with other black people. <laughs> yeah, you don't, because you're enabling them to do wrong. Yeah, and I tell black people this all the time. Like you, you cannot be afraid to criticize another black person. Yeah, it's at the okay. End of the day, it's okay. Yes, <laughs> you want to see them do better. That's why you're criticizing. You're not hating. Yeah. you're not bringing them down. There's no crab in a the bucket theory. You're you're sitting them down, and saying, "Hey, you could do better. Just let me give you my two cents, and then just kind of follow it up with it if you want. It's up to you." Yeah. I can't deal sometimes. I just can't. That's a whole other story <laughs> for a whole other show. We can get to that later on, but we're already out of time. So on that note, what do you have coming up in the future, man? Uh, you know, working with my dude, Andrew. That's what's we're up. We're working on some, uh, some ventures. Right now, the main goal is uh, just a little, a little project for people to... I haven't dropped anything really since Leo Soul, so yeah, yeah. I want to let people know that I am still working on music yeah, um, and just share some music with you guys. I have some music in the vault mm-hmm. that I'm looking to release sometime soon. And uh, while I drop that, I'll be working on the main, the main project for the upcoming year. Okay, that's what's up. And then hopefully performances. That's what's up, man. <laughs> and do we have like a timetable or is this all kind of in the works? Um, right now? You know what? Christmas is the game plan for, uh, for like a little, just a little, a little project for, for people to just hear some more LC. Mm-hmm. Um, if that doesn't happen, I might just release a song. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, and then the next project, I have no game plan as a time. Yeah. I just really want to make sure it's something that feels complete. That's a sub. That's a sub. And where can the people find you on the social media? Social uh, media. So basically, <laughs> all my social networks, it's LC the Artist. So E L C double E P H E A R T I S T, not T H A, like the, because I'm not a thug. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> we do like the literal terms and we, and we use literature. So there we go. LC the Artist on everything Twitter, Instagram, SoundCloud, Facebook. Um, I'm not on MySpace, but mm-hmm. <laughs> YouTube. A lot of people are on MySpace anymore. Yeah, I don't. Though. I feel bad for them because they're trying to come back. Yeah, it's not happening. It's cute. Though. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, LC, thank you for coming through. You already know you're welcome to come through anytime. You give me a call, we'll make it happen. Thank you. Um, man. for all the people out there in the universe right now listening, you already know what it is. You can tune us, get tune into us every week Thursdays from eight till nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Follow me on Twitter at DM underscore cool and cool underscore radio. This year, we do have the year-end special. We're bringing it back for a second time. I need y'all to tell me who the biggest wankster of the year was, man. We're going to do a whole countdown on that. You already know what's coming up. I got some guests lined up. I'm not going to say who. I'm going to leave it a surprise, but it'll be my brain trust pr- uh, panel just just to let y'all know. It's coming up soon. It's coming up, so uh, keep on the lookout for that. But anyways, you already know how we do. It's that time to go. Once again, it's your man, DM. Cool. Keep it gravy and wavy. We are out of here. Peace. Cool.